let's get started here. Uh, Richard, stop, uh, Richard, sorry. <laughs> stop me, start me, that, the, 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 stop me off, and num- I just can't talk. Start me off with number nine. Okay, so the elasticity and shape of the object, so that affects the natural frequency, which we'll get to, okay? But what, what is it? What is the natural frequency? Connor, what you got? What is the natural frequency? Huh? You put the same thing as in. Anyone got something different? Maddox? Isn't it just like, like when it's like left alone, it does natural vibration? Yes. So, and that's caused by the shape and the elasticity. So, what it is, it's the frequency. with which an object vibrates naturally. Hence the natural frequency name. Not very creative, but it gets the job done. And it's caused by shape and elasticity. All right, let me show you an example of this here. I'm going to show a lot of examples today. All right, Eve, tell me about resonance, 10A. Um, the of the Say it one more time. Um, what do you mean by that? Kind of. You're getting on the right track. What else we got? You're getting there. It has to do with what the object wants to do, but there's something more to it besides that. What else we got? No? It's going to make, make me sad. Getting there, but it's caused by something. What is it caused by? Close? That's what happens because of it. Someone said it. So. Yes. So what happens is with resonance is when the object is forced to vibrate at its natural frequency by something else, it does so at large amplitude. So define resonance. So it's when an object is forced to vibrate at its natural frequency by an outside source and does so with large Amplitudes. Okay, I'm going to show you two demos of this. So, when the tuning fork of 500 hertz is forced to vibrate at 500 hertz by the other tuning fork The first does so with large amplitude. But it's not just sounds that do this. So let me show you. So the Tacoma Narrows Bridge works. So the bridge... 
was forced to vibrate at its natural frequency. and did so so much that it collapsed. Okay, before we talk about um, beats, which will be the last part we do here on these notes, um, before we talk about beats, I want to briefly recap constructive and destructive interference. So constructive interference is when um, two waves add together to make a larger wave. And destructive interference is when two waves subtract to cancel out. So constructive interference is when you have this wave plus that same wave, and it makes super wave. Okay, and destructive interference is when you have one wave plus the opposite wave, and they cancel out with each other. So, beats and what causes them. So, let me let you hear beats first. Beats are um, vibrations. that are of slightly different frequencies that cause alternating constructive and destructive interference. Okay, so an example is out of tune instruments. If you have ever played in a band and someone you're playing with is out of tune, you've heard this before. The, the sounds don't really work. They kind of make this off-putting sound. They kind of make this throbbing resonating weird thing and that's because since they're out of tune they're going to make constructive interference to get louder then destructive interference to get quieter and then constructive interference to get louder and then destructive interference to get quieter and since they're close they'll do a little bit more constructive than destructive so they'll never cancel out completely but they'll cancel out enough that it'll be less volume and it won't be as loud and you'll hear that beat, that pulsation. Okay, and that happens without a tuned instruments, which is the way to tune your instrument. You play it with another object, and when the um, when you stop hearing the beats, then you know it's in tune. This is how people tune pianos. They use tuning forks of set frequency. They play the tuning fork, then they hit the string, and they adjust the piano until the string and the um, tuning fork make the same frequency. So that's kind of how that works. How do they get out of tune in the first place, though? How do they get out of tune in the first place? Um, so, like pianos, the strings, like the more you play them, or the longer they, like the longer they're sitting there, um, their tension lessens over time, and so they're not as tight as they would be originally. Same thing with like, if you have like two trumpets, 
So the trumpets, over time, their slides, or their little valves are going to contract a little bit because of the weather or expand a little bit because of the weather. And so that change will cause them to go out of tune a little bit. Same thing with like my bass guitar. As the strings tighten or, whatever, or relax, it changes. 